to or welcome back to my channel So Little Time and my name is Karen. In today's video I'm going to be doing a review all about the Tilling the Buttons Nora sweater. So if you'd like to hear a little bit more about how I got on with this please stay tuned. Well, thanks very much for joining me again today. I'm really sorry that I haven't been um, on my YouTube channel for a while. I feel like I haven't uploaded a video uh, for quite a while now and I've been meaning to bring my um, autumn plans video to you so that will be uploaded very soon so please do keep an eye out for that. Um, but today I wanted to talk to you all about the Tilling the Buttons Nora sweater. So this is the pattern here as you can see on the front it's quite a relaxed fit sweater and very generous in its size there it's quite an oversized baggy kind of sweater and there are um, some different options so on the back you can see there are some line drawings and you've got sort of a short sleeve version here and then there is one with the I think it's like an elbow length maybe three quarter length sort of sleeve with the stepped hem and then there's one with the long sleeves and a sort of funnel neck and again the stepped hem on that as well so I think you can really mix and match sort of this pattern up to get different variations so I think that's a really good thing about this pattern. When this first came out I really wasn't taken with it because of its oversized bagginess uh, because I do prefer a more fitted silhouette just because I like to show off my smaller waist area as I think that suits me a lot better but um, I was actually recently contacted by Kim from Crafty So and So. Now earlier on, I think it was this year or maybe back end of last year, they put a, um, a call out for people to apply to be part of their blogger team. And I did apply, but unfortunately I wasn't successful, but they did email to say that they were overwhelmed with um, you know, quite a lot of applicants. And what they wanted to do was just call on us that didn't get sort of uh, accepted for the positions. Um, that they would like to sort of contact us as and when to do a guest blog. And they, but I thought that was really, really nice. And they have actually kept to their word and um, did contact me sort of, I think it was around August time to say, would I be interested in doing a guest blog and using one of their fabrics? Um, so I said, yes, of course. Um, so I was really, really pleased to be able to do that. Now they gave me um, an amount that I was able to spend at their shop on the fabric and the pattern. And then anything that was over, I put money towards myself. So that's what we did. Now I chose this gorgeous French terry fabric, um, which they are now stocking and it's got this lovely sort of teal background colour and lovely you know uh, flowers and butterflies and that all over it and I really really liked it but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to make so I scrolled through all their patterns um, and initially I wanted to make some pyjamas but the pyjama pattern I was thinking of they didn't actually have in their pattern selection so that's why in the end I went for the Tilly the Buttons Nora. So I thought I'll give it a chance and see how I get on with it um, and I've used French Terry in the past and I really really like working with this fabric. It's, uh, it's just got a nice sort of drape to it but it still has that thickness um, to give it sort of the stability that I like as well and it has a lovely sort of um, loop back background um, on the reverse and that means it's nice and warm. So for the Tilly the Buttons Nora then, like I said, it is a really oversized jumper. So usually with Tilly the Buttons patterns in her stretch patterns or anything that has a lot of ease, I always size down. So I knew I would do that with this pattern. So just to give you the idea of the actual um, sizes. So for the body measurements then, it goes from a size one through to a size eight. So for the size one, that is a bust of 30 inches, a waist of 24 inches and a hip of 33 inches. And then for the size eight, that's a 44 inch bust, 38 inch waist and a 47 inch hip. So I decided to go with the size three, sizing down from my usual body measurements, which correspond to a size four. Um, and the finished garment measurements for the size three are 44 and a half inch bust, a 44 and a half inch waist, and a 44 and a half inch hip. So you can see that that is completely the same across all measurements. So it's a very, very boxy style um, jumper sweater. 
Um, so I cut out the size three and then sewed it up um, on my standard sewing machine. So I, I like to base the side seams first before um, I use my overlocker just so I can make sure that I've got the size right. And if I want to make any adjustments, it's really easy to unpick those um, based in stitches basically. And I just use um, a five, I think it's a number five on the stitch length on my machine. And that is just easy to take the stitches out if I need to. So when I tried it on, I also tried it on without the neck banding initially um, and I just found that the size 3 actually came up really really big um, so I decided then that I would need to actually cut a size 2 because I think it would suit my shape a lot better. So the version that I actually went for as well is the cropped version but I decided not to have the stepped hem so if I just pan you down you'll be able to see that it's quite short um, and I have just joined it all the way around at exactly the same level as the front. So the back is the same all the way around. And so I just used the front of the sweater as the length that I wanted and just didn't do the stepped hem at all at the back. So it is quite a cropped length. So I have got it on with a top on underneath, which I think contrasts quite nicely with the pink in it. Um, or you could wear it without, you know, if I pull up, it looks fine as well without actually having that on but because I'm not keen on my hips I just think that that actually just elongates my body a little bit more and disguises my hip shape um, and actually I've got it on today with some teal coloured jeans that I just randomly picked up from my local charity shop recently and it just goes so so well so I'm really really pleased with that and I'll just pan you down a little bit more so you can see on my feet I'm wearing it with trainers and I call these my funky trainers they're just like your adidas sort of style ones because um they're not my running trainers I really really like this fabric it was an absolute dream to work with um so I had no problems using you know my zigzag stitch on it and I didn't have any problems with using my twin needle either so on the um sleeves you can see that I have actually rolled mine up um just because I quite liked having that bit of contrast um but when you have the sleeves down they are quite long, as you can see. They are supposed to be quite um, long sleeves, and I do quite like that. So, you know, if you want to snuggle up, you can kind of tuck your hands in and that kind of thing. And I've used a contrasting thread on the um, twin needling. So I've used a yellow and a pink, just what I had in my threads. Um, and actually, I think they were old Silco uh, cotton reels, so it was really nice to be able to use those that I picked up from charity shops. Um, and then I just actually used my overlocker and I've just used the navy blue thread that I had. Now for the sleeves, you are just supposed to overlock the edge and then fold those in um, and then just obviously top stitched it, top stitched it down. <laughs> but I actually um, folded the hem twice. So you can't see my overlocking stitches around the edge of that because I've done a double fold because these sleeves, they were really quite long and I think that length kind of suits me a bit better than having it all the way down to my knuckles as that's where it was coming down to um, but yes I do quite like just folding those sleeves back just to give that little bit of contrast on there and I think because I'm wearing white trainers as well it just goes <laughs> a lot better so like I said the size 3 did come up significantly bigger than I anticipated it to be um, so I've sized down to the size 2 now I do think I could even size down to a size 1 if I wanted a more closer fit but I'm quite happy with how that the bagginess is of that, you know, there's there's still lots of room and there's lots of room under the arm as well, you know. Um, yes, and I do really like it with wearing it with this uh, sort of colour contrasting. Um, so I did try initially before I made this version to use the funnel neck to make the, the one with the funnel neck. Um, but this fabric, it's it has got quite a generous amount of stretch, but it didn't have enough stretch for when I did the neck band. So when I put the funnel neck, I actually attached it just by basting it on initially. And I put it, it was a struggle to get it over my head. And then when it was on, it was fine. But then obviously taking it off was a bit of a struggle. And I just like would smudge my makeup all over it, which I found quite annoying. And also because it was quite, um, a snug fit I just felt like it may, I was pulling at it a little bit and it was starting to choke me and I, I think sometimes as well when I'm wearing sort of a more 
baggier top or something that's very busy like the detail on this fabric that I need something that isn't too close to my face and it just I just need a bit more skin on display. Now I have um, attached a pink ribbing for my neck band and you will see that this is really really thin so that is a lot thinner than it is supposed to be and I'm going to call it a happy accident actually because I actually do really like it how it is I think it just it's not too much pink it's just that nice little bit of contrast with some of the flowers that are in the detail on this fabric um, but I did actually cut it too small by accident now what I usually do with my neck bands is that I base them on with my normal sewing machine or I sew them on rather with my normal sewing machine and then I usually just overlock literally the edge um, so that it is actually sewn on my sewing machine I overlock the um, unfinished edge and then I top stitch down with a twin needle so I have done that as well around my neck with the two contrasting coloured stitches again um, but yes the I did have that little bit of an accident <laughs> cutting too much off so this time I don't know why I decided I thought oh, I'll just do it on the overlocker um, so I think I had basted it in and then I went straight in on my overlocker at 1.5 centimeters following that gauge but it just seemed to take way too much off and I was like oh that's gone really thin now and even probably to the point that I don't think it's 100% even all the way around but it's not really that noticeable I don't think um, but I'm going to call it a happy accident because I do actually quite like that it is quite thin and it shows off a little bit more of my neck so this busy print isn't too much. So the deadline is actually today for the Crafty So and So blog. Um, so what I'll do is this video will be live when the blog is actually live on their website. So I'm gonna put the link in the description box below for you so you can have a read all about it and see all the photos. So I'm actually gonna be taking the photos today and unfortunately it's really wet today and it's just, oh, gonna be horrible going outside to take photos, although, Sometimes it's quite nice not to have the sun out when you're taking photos because you can actually get the colour of the outfit that you're wearing a lot better. But I was planning on going at Braggart Park, which is just local to where I live. Um, really fortunate to have this gorgeous park on my doorstep. And I wanted to obviously utilise that and take some lovely photos there. So I broke my dad in <laughs> to come around and take some photos for me in this outfit so I can put it on the blog. Um, but it's going to be quite soggy, so I think Wellington's going to be put on and we're going to go up there and find a sort of treed, covered area so we can actually um, get some decent photos, so fingers crossed. Um, otherwise, I'll just have to have a rethink about how I'm going to do the photos. So I'll insert the photos into this video as well, just so you can have a look at the sweater in a little bit more detail. So I shall do that now. So I hope you really enjoyed that. I have to say I'm really, really happy with the sweater and I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to try this pattern out. So thank you to Crafty So and So for contacting me to be part of their guest bloggers. I really have enjoyed the process um, and I really do hope that you enjoy reading the blog if you do so. I would definitely like to make some more of these in different versions. So I'd like to try that funnel neck version out. So I just use it in a different drapier fabric um, so a jersey that has a lot more stretch in it, I think that would be really nice. Um, and it's just nice to have sort of a little bit more loungewear in my wardrobe. As you know, I have been trying to incorporate that into my wardrobe as I was lacking in that area. So thank you very much for watching today. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. That would be lovely. And also don't forget, I do have a Ko-Fi page where you can buy me a virtual coffee if you would like to help contribute to my YouTube channel. Thank you ever so much for watching and I shall see you again very soon. Bye.